The spleen is a much overlooked and neglected organ. Attached to the stomach by the lesser omentum, it doesn't look very impressive. It's rather bland and it doesn't have any lobes like the lungs or the liver. It does have quite a different shape and size between species, with horses having arguably the coolest looking spleens, but overall its macroscopic appearance is a bit uninspiring. Despite looking quite boring, the spleen is a really important part of the immune system. Lymph nodes are the surveillance centres of the lymph, while the spleen performs the same function for the blood. As blood passes through the spleen, it's checked by immune cells for damaged cells and pathogens. In order to see all of this, we need to take a look at the microscopic anatomy of the spleen. We can divide the spleen into two functional tissues, the red pulp and the white pulp. This refers to the macroscopic appearance. Microscopically, the red pulp is still red or pink, but the white pulp is a dark purple. The majority of the spleen is red pulp, and in some spleens, the white pulp can be quite difficult to spot. However, when there's an immune reaction, the white pulp can expand in size quite dramatically, so that it's visible even macroscopically. Aside from the red and white pulp, the spleen has a few structural elements to it. It's surrounded by a thick fibrous capsule from which trabeculae of smooth muscle extend into the parenchyma. These smooth muscle trabeculae are particularly important in horses and dogs which use the spleen as a reserve tank of red blood cells. When these species exercise, the smooth muscle trabeculae contract and squeeze all the reserve cells from the red pulp into the circulation where they can usefully deliver oxygen. According to the textbooks, the red pulp itself can be split into three functional areas. Filtering areas, non-filtering areas and perilymphoid zones. Generally, the red pulp looks like a bit of a mess, but sometimes you can see hints of the filtering areas. 90% of blood entering the spleen goes through the filtering areas. Red blood cells arrive at the spleen via the splenic artery, from where they flow down a smaller network of arteries until they arrive at sheath capillaries. These are unique structures to the spleen. Most capillaries are connected to arterioles at one end and venules at the other, and are lined by endothelial cells. Sheath capillaries are blind ending, so they're not connected to the venous system. They have no endothelium and they're surrounded by macrophages. The lack of endothelium means that red blood cells can leak out of them. To do so, they have to pass through the macrophages, which act as a filtering mechanism. Any red blood cells with abnormalities can be removed, and any bacteria or pathogens will be phagocytosed and dealt with appropriately. In this section of a cat spleen, I think you can reliably see the features of the filtering areas. There are aggregates of macrophages that could re represent the sheaths. Some of them contain little granules of hemosiderin, suggesting they've been phagocytosing red blood cells. The capillaries themselves aren't really visible because there's no endothelium to identify them. Instead, it's likely that these red blood cell filled spaces are the capillaries. All of these areas around the macrophages are the splenic parenchyma, where red blood cells that are filtered from the sheath capillaries will end up. Once the red blood cells have passed through the macrophages and into the parenchyma, they can rejoin the circulation via a venous sinus. The venous sinuses are lined by endothelial cells and are easier to identify. These sinuses will drain into larger veins and finally into the splenic vein, which leaves the organ towards the hepatic portal vein. It can be difficult to make sense of this pattern in other spleens, Basically, the spleen is going to be full of whatever circulating cells there are. This might include large numbers of other immune cells. Take this section from a sheep's spleen. It's packed full of plasma cells and lymphocytes interspersed with red blood cells. There's no nice organised areas of macrophages or even visible sinuses. In this section from another sheep, it's a similar picture, with the red pulp being expanded by large numbers of white blood cells, including neutrophils. Among the seeming chaos of red blood cells and white blood cells, it can be difficult to pick out non-filtering areas. In theory, the non-filtering areas of red pulp don't have any sinuses and contain mainly T and B lymphocytes with macrophages. But to be honest, I've never convincingly been able to identify a non-filtering area against a filtering area. The perilymphoid zones are found around the white pulp. Like the non-filtering areas, these zones are devoid of sinuses. Only around 10% of the blood entering the spleen will pass through the section of parenchyma, but the blood flow is more sluggish, most likely to enhance the interaction between white blood cells and any antigens or antigen-antibody complexes that are circulating in the blood. The white pulp is far simpler to identify, 
mainly because it's so densely cellular, being composed of T and B lymphocytes. The most consistent features are T lymphocytes that form a sheath around central arteries. These are called periarteriolar lymphoid sheaths, or PALS for short. In this section we can see an unstimulated area of white pulp. The lymphocytes form a small, dense ring around the blood vessel. When the white pulp is stimulated by antigen, usually presented by a macrophage, the lymphoid tissue undergoes hyperplasia to form lymphoid follicles. This can look really obvious, even at low power. Take this section of sheep spleen as an example. Suddenly the white pulp is standing out like a beacon. These lymphoid follicles are formed mainly of B lymphocytes. Even at low power, we can pick out a structure to the follicles. At the centre, there is a lighter, less dense area called the germinal centre. This is formed as centroblasts, which are mitotically active and will divide to form B cells. In this high power image, we can pick out the centroblasts as large cells with dispersed chromatin. You can even see a few mitotic figures hanging around. The germinal centre is surrounded by a thin, dense zone of lymphocytes called the mantle zone. This is formed of unactivated B lymphocytes that have been displaced by the expanding germinal centre. The mantle zone is in turn surrounded by the marginal zone, which is populated by marginal zone B lymphocytes that have a complex and slightly unknown function. These follicles produce large numbers of B cells that will mature to plasma cells and begin producing antibody to fight whatever infection stimulated their growth in the first place. So that's a basic rundown of splenic histology. Remember, red pulp is red and white pulp is blue. I hope this video was helpful. If you found it useful, leave a comment below about other topics you would like me to cover. You can find other videos about normal histology on the channel page. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.